third set will be played on Core Hall, Floating Island. And we do have the top left, bottom right starting positions. So in the bottom right, the red Protoss from Unjin Star is currently with two kills, going for a third. His name is Free. His opponent spawning in the top left hand position, trying to prevent Free from going for the third kill. His name is Haiba, spawning as Blue Zerg on the left top position of the map. So, they did change this map around a little bit from the last round. They just made the chokes a little bit smaller. They mm -hmm. put some neutral supply depots, as you can clearly see right here. That allows Protoss players the wall off one side. Same with Terrans. Mm -hmm. And we already have Free sending out a, a scouting probe here, so not going to go for any super early expansion without scouting. I think he just wants to play it safe. He knows that he's he has good momentum right now, and if he just gets to play the game comfortably, things will work out for him. And also, realize that the map has two entrances. Yes, e it's easy to block off the double sides, but if you if your opponent goes for the tempo, and if you don't scout it in time and go for the Nexus first, then the Zerglings are going to get inside the main base no matter what. Yeah. So, he's just trying to play as safe as possible, now goes inside the net main base, and does not see a spawning pool. Uh, also, I want to point out that Free is actually playing a little bit to his opponent because Haiva, he's a player that's not afraid to cheese. He has gone for some early uh, six, seven, eight pools before in the past. Um, not always against Protoss, but just in general, his style sometimes can be quite aggressive. And Free scouting here, it's just, I see no reason why not to against a player mm -hmm. like Haiva. But after seeing the 14 pool, it's uh, pool first. It's safe for Free to actually go for the um, Nexus first if he wants to, but he's gonna go for the Forge first. Yeah, going for that Forge. He may go for a pylon block at the natural there. Mm -hmm. It's quite possible. No, okay, so it looks like the expansion is going to be south of the main base. Mm -hmm. And Free, he, he he's ex expecting the expansion to be here. Yeah, he actually checked the 12 o'clock location because that's where the Zerg players usually go for because it's easier to move towards the right side clockwise to take a fourth base in that area. Yeah, exactly. We've seen expansions all over, uh, all over the place on this map, though. Mm -hmm. it, a lot of it does come down to a player preference. And Free, surprisingly enough, he's getting at the cannon before the Nexus. Actually, yeah. Free didn't he doesn't even realize what's going on here. He thinks that maybe his opponent's going for some type of aggressive one base, but Ivo, he just took his expansion in a different location, and he's going to get a third behind this, no problem, in his natural, or a normal natural position. So a little bit of a misread from Free here, actually. Yeah, but you could also read it as, like, Free's just trying to play really safe. Yeah, against his opponent. He's playing really safe. And, you know, he's not going to really be too far behind or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's just, like, if you want to be as greedy as possible and squeeze out as much as you can, then, you know, you would... And, oh, actually uh, killing off that scouting probe there. Mm -hmm. I might actually have a better micro, and that's four Zerglings, not two. Yeah. All right, we have the double gas finishing up for free here. It's going to probably be moving into that Stargate tech momentarily as well when he gets the gas and the cybernetic score up. Everything just feels a little bit slower for him because... He went for the Forge and Cannon before the Nexus. It's one step slower, but it's not devastating to a point where he's going to lose the game right away. Yeah. And the Zergling's actually forgetting about that scouting probe over there. Mm -hmm. Going to put one Zergling to the probe, but that's not going to kill the probe at all. That's only going to keep where Free's probe is. So Free, he is going to get the scout, but he can't put down any proxy pylon around the map. Yeah, that's something important to point out there, too. The potential harassment from Free early on in the game almost nullified. Hive is going to be able to just drone up like a madman, and he knows he can get away with it. Mm -hmm. All right, we do have uh, kind of early gas going down from Hive here. They're going down around 33 supply. Generally, we'll see them about 10 supply later. Uh huh. So interesting that he is going for such early gas here. We do have a Stargate on the way from Free. Yeah, Free's yeah. number one priority right now is to check to see where the expansions are because he never saw the expansions go up. So yes, he's not going to scout the gas at the third, uh, the natural base over there, but he does see the creep, he does see the queen, so he knows there is a hatchery over there. Yeah, that's something important to point out there. So, Haiva, he went for the early gas, but besides that, he's still droning up pretty heavily. Maybe he just wants to go into his layer tech a little bit faster. It's mm -hmm. possible. But, um... I am a little bit suspicious of his motives. He's getting a speed right now. Going He's still it. getting a gas behind us, but not so much at this point. Yeah. He's just slowly getting it right now, so it's most likely going to be a speed plus rare layer at the same time. Okay. Worker count pretty similar here as well. 
Uh, overall, pretty passive game, actually. Just a little I'm, bit of action early on. I'm just interested to see how Free is going to play out his PBC because, yes, we've been seeing some uh, regular PBC play from Free, but we also saw some plays where Free goes for the Void Ray first, but today he's going for the Phoenix first. Yeah, and he's trying to hide the Phoenix as well. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work, though. These, uh, this Overlord's going to get over there and scout it, I think. He is going to scout it, but Free can just run around, and before the Spore Quality can finish, he could have uh, three Phoenixes inside his opponent's main base. All right, well, the, the two sentries over here, they're chipping away at that Overlord, shining a flashlight on him, and it'll eventually kill it. So now Hydra does scout up the two gateways before yeah. the Overlord does, does go down, but he doesn't see the Phoenix. Yeah, that's actually pretty important, which means we're not going to be seeing any spore crawlers just yet. Yeah. And now Free is moving across the map with his three Phoenix. He should be able to... Oh, never mind. There's already spore crawlers up. Excuse me. But I think he can actually get the Queen. First lift, and he needs another lift on the Queen to get it. Yep. The queen, second lift goes down. The Queen will get killed off here. You know, High Five was kind of expecting some type of spore, uh, Phoenix play from his opponent, but he wasn't sure that's why the Queen was out of position, not next to the Spore Crawler. Uh, actually, there are no Spores over here at the third base here, mm. so that Queen's going to get picked off pretty fast. And not, not bad so far by Free. He's already killed off two Queens. If he can get a third, then this is really going to be uh, pretty helpful here for him. Well, he doesn't want to risk it at this point because one of the Phoenix is really low on HP. The Queen is just hugging the uh, oh. Spore right now, and that Phoenix actually gets taken out. A little bit of a mistake there by Free, but you know what? He's already done a good amount of damage here at the Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And we have the Hydra um, speed upgrade on the way, getting that plus one attack as well behind this. So that's Hyva's unit of choice today. It's going to be the Hydra, I guess, Hydraling composition. May go into Mutas afterward. Mm -hmm. Well, going for the Mutas is kind of tricky when it comes to PBC because most Protoss players these days, they open up Phoenix, so you need to make sure that the Phoenixes are down before you switch into Mutas. Oh! When, when did those Zerglings get inside the main base? This is actually a huge mistake from Free here. He shouldn't have let this happen. Uh, looks like he hasn't lost too many probes here, but still, that's got to be so annoying, the deal weapon. Free actually sending uh, most of his units back now, realizing that the threat, it can be annoying. Maybe only pick off a few more units at most. Free grabbing his third base, putting a few cannons down there as well. The what's funny is that be annoying. what's funny is that these zerglings were intended to uh, deny the third base as much as possible. Ooh, sick. Uh, but they actually snuck inside the natural, kill some probes. Yes, the pilot is not gonna get taken out. Can he actually get it? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Oh! 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 oh. <laughs> Two more hits and it would have gone down. So nice force fields from Free, saving that pylon. A little funky over there. Yeah. Oh, look at this. A really ha fast hive timing from Hiva here. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's getting the plus two range attack, Roach speed, Hydra range on the way as well here. I mean, Hiva is just that one player where he doesn't want to stay at the mid stage for too long. Remember the last TBC that he saw that we saw from Iba? He went for a really fast hive. Something that we don't see from the Zerg players in that particular matchup. Yeah. Alright, Hive moving in here, but there's too much defense from Free. I don't think this is gonna work. As long as there's good force fields, he can defend against the Hydras. Yeah, he's got the force fields, the cannons, he also has the uh, a lot of zealots there. The Nexus cannon as well. Hive taking a fourth base behind this. I think he's realized, alright, this base is pretty fortified. Maybe I can try to attack from the other side with these Phoenix. Doing a good job scouting. Now behind this free is slowly transitioning into Sky Toss. Two more Stargates out on the way. He's gonna try to fortify himself on three bases completely, have the three base economy, and just try to get as many void rays as possible. Yeah. Yeah, is adding on those two Stargates like you mentioned. And we do have the plus one air attack on the way, but we also have two Colossi in the army here for mm -hmm. free. This is really cool, and that's Six gonna... Vipers out on the way. Whoa! We haven't whoa. seen this in a long time for Pro League. I'm glad. I'd love to see the Vipers. They could actually work here because the Templar tech is so far away, and uh, the rocks, natural destructible mm -hmm. rocks here are getting taken out. But the no commitment for an attack. The thing is, the Vipers may be spotted by the Phoenix. And yes, if that it. happens, then we're going to see that Templar tech go up instantly as a response to the counter them. You need to use feedbacks if you want to counter the Vipers. Where are the Phoenix right now? Not too sure where they are. Now he's... Okay, so they're on the left bottom side trying to harass the drones, but he, those Phoenixes are not getting important scouting information. There's only three Colossus, maybe four Colossus out on the field right now, which means that those six Vipers, 
they could eat, they could just abduct the Colossus all day long. Now, the Zergling's trying to move in there, but it's going to be a mistake. Hiva uh, retreats for now. That's okay, though. He doesn't actually need those Zerglings because he's transitioning yeah. to that Roach, Hydra, Viper in the composition. He's just going to you know, start dragging away a lot of those units and picking, picking apart that Toss army piece by piece. And there is an Observer on the left side. But I don't think that's going to scout the Vipers. Moving down on the map. All right, the Vipers will, will be seen now. Now it's going to get scouted. And now Free know exactly knows what he is dealing against. Yeah, so are we going to see any type of tech go down the count of the Viper specifically? Not yet. The Void Ray count, though, it's starting to get high right now. We're already up to 179 supply for our Protoss player compared to the maxed mm. out Zerg army. Basically, Hive Hi actually, actually has to do a lot of damage here if he wants to win. Otherwise, it's not going to work out. Yeah. He can just hide behind these cannons for now and even maybe put up the Nexus cannon. That's what he needs to do because once he steps out of Duck and your Colossus is gone, you can't not push out oh, on the map. Sick. Using uh, the, the ability um, to... Landing Cloud on the cannons, and that's going to nullify them right away. And the Abduct on the Void Race. Oh my god, so many units getting dragged over here. And uh, Hiva is just like tearing apart this I army here using the Vipers. No High Templars to feed back on the Vipers. And it looks like Hiva may end up winning here. Free is counterattacking this expansion over here. Forces a cancel. The Void Rays are charged up. They have decent upgrades. The Hydra is streaming still in alive. here. This Colossus could allow for the stay in this game more. Void Ray's coming out here, and it looks like Hiva, he is deflected for now. Hiva should have sniped the Colossus right away. Yes, he did get a lot of important units, and this is not a good situation for free, because there's 20 more Hydras coming out on the way, but Hiva could have done a lot more with that army. Granted, free, he lost a lot of Colossus. He lost a lot of Void Ways. We have some Manlots moving into the main base here. Free is going to start, you know, scattering his opponent's attention here, doing some economic damage, really annoying him with these Zealots. But we have a lot more units out on the way. Hive is already remaxed, and this time around, free, he's only at uh, about 117 supply. He needs a lot more than that to deal with this army composition. Well, I don't know if he can actually defend this. He has two Colossus, a couple of Void Rays, but no ground army to defend against what Hyba has. Yeah, with the Vipers coming in, they're just going to be able to drag these units one by one. And it looks like Free may end up losing here. A duck goes down, picking off one of the Colossi. The Once second again. one gets dragged back. And then the Void Rays are being attacked next. GG is called. Hyba defeats Free. In the third set. Free had a really amazing composition against the Zerg player, but he just could not have the right unit composition against the Vipers and could not survive a little time. That was that was actually so cool. He went for a fast hive and he just made he transitioned into Roaches a little bit later than the average Zerg would, and things ended up working out pretty good for him. And if if there was no abduct there, that Zerg army would have yes. gotten destroyed. It would have gotten Island. Yeah, actually there's a little timing window where the Vipers can work out really well against the Protoss player and Hyba hit the perfect timing before the Templars were out. That's the key, that perfect timing, that's what he hit, that's what allowed Hyba to win. Okay guys, currently the score, 2-1. to the one. Wunjin Star is still in the lead. Next map will be Naro Station. Don't go anywhere. We will be back after this